Lamaitra was, Father Lamaitra was uh, a genius when it comes to just a, a person. Uh, the, the sheer amount of education he got is staggering. Um, in Belgium, pre-World War I, um, he excelled at everything he did, but he happened to be poor, so he got an engineering degree. So of all the things he ended up doing, he started out with an engineering degree and, and started to work in that field. World War I happened, and then he became a very highly decorated soldier for uh, for Belgium, and when he got done, because of this sort of uh, the, the well-decorated manner and the esteem he was held in, um, they let him go back to college. And this time, he started studying two things at once: um, philosophy on track to become a priest, uh, but then also mathematics, so that he could eventually enter into the realms of physics and uh, things like this. So he did both. He ended up becoming a parish priest, a diocesan priest, I should say, not a parish priest, um, for uh, in Belgium. Uh, he was a sort of a special, not a monsignor out of the gate, but they made him a, had him a special assignment for the cathedral so he could continue his studies in science. Um, he ended up getting a PhD uh, in uh, that realm uh, over at in MI, MIT in the United States, but he was decorated all over the place, um, became a professor for the Catholic University of Levain uh, ended up on the Pontifical Academy of Sciences, highly touted, but what he's probably most famous for in the physics world is uh, two things. One that we all are pretty fairly well know, the Big Bang Theory, which he called uh, the primordial egg or the cosmic egg, the primordial atom or the cosmic egg theory. Um, but then also really even before that he made huge strides in the theory of relativity. So um, Einstein's famous theory, he was able to really expand on it. What eventually became known as Hubble's law and Hubble's constant, which is about the expanding universe and we don't need to do uh, math. You certainly don't need to hear the math from me. Um, but the the pioneering in that field he did really opened up the ability for us to understand what the universe is like and really drove a lot of the findings of cosmology. So uh, cosmology and physics is the beginnings of the physical universe. And um, his uh, findings there, his revolution there in a way, um, still is uh, felt today and considered one of the founders of uh, the progress made in the 20th century in the realm of physics, all while being um, a priest. He was an academic priest, um, very famously had a, a sort of love in his heart for the Chinese students um, at his university in Belgium and was their chaplain. Um, so on the side, still, you know, saying mass, having sermons, going on 10-day retreats. Um, he, you know, they, the joke was that although he was willing to uh, sort of be like Augustine when it came to interpreting Genesis, the one thing he took absolutely literally, literally, literally was the Sabbath day. He really went around making sure everybody took the Sabbath day to rest and then work hard. Um, but yeah, that was his life was not only being famous for one of the more famous theories in physics, but being a priest all along. One of the interesting things and why I think uh, Father Demaitre is such a good example is there's a way in which we think if we're going to be faithful Catholics in what we do, it's we're going to do whatever we do but sprinkle in a bit of Catholicism or even like make it Catholic flavored. Uh, what you might be surprised with Father Lemaitre is he was very intent that when he discussed physics, he wasn't trying to make it have a sort of Catholic tint or Catholic border because physics is a specific thing. And this goes down to our understanding of what we mean by the natural sciences. Like a good uh, Catholic philosopher, uh, sort of hearkening to Thomas Aquinas, he points out that in the matters of theology and physics, things that he's done his whole life. It's a matter of the ends of what those sciences are and the sort of basis for why those sciences uh, begin and the methodologies by which they proceed. So for him, what made him distinctly a Catholic scientist is that he didn't need to flavor his science with his Catholicism because all truth belongs to God and all creation is God's. When you do physics, you actually are limiting yourself to look through a particular lens for the sake of seeing things in a particular way. And Father Lemaitre thought this was 
very natural. He didn't need to him and haw about this. Um, even when Pope Pius XII uh, a few times tried to integrate some of his findings into sort of more philosophical, theological, metaphysical um, meditations, uh, Father Lemaitre actually got to sit down with the Pope and convince him that that wasn't really um, the best way to do, and, and, and not because he was worried about science taint, or religion tainting science, he thought it was the other way around. Scientific theories, he said, are passing things, right? He himself, after he sort of developed the cosmic egg argument, really stopped being involved in the cosmological arguments because they started veering into uh, nuclear physics and more you know, to do with atoms and things like this. And he was more a mathematician, for instance. Uh, and e even his sort of what ended up really proving his theory, the discovery of the cosmological background radiation, came out of left field. He never predicted that. He thought it was going to be something about um, decaying cosmic rays, which he was wrong about. So he tells the Pope that, you know, with physics, it's more about narrowing down and deciding to look at the world in a specific lens for a particular purpose. And we don't have to worry about making our physics Catholic flavored or our science uh, bordered by a sort of Catholicism because Catholic is universal and God is the God of all truths. And so for him it wasn't a problem at all. When you're in the lab, he's doing physics as himself, Father Lamitra. And then when he leaves, when he's going and seeing his students, he's a priest confecting the Eucharist, hearing confessions, praying and meditating. So it's funny because it's seamless and that's what we want, but I think that people confuse that. They would think that it means that it was like, uh, Ad admixed as to be confused. But it, like our Lord, fully God, fully man, it was an integrated whole, but not a mixed whole.